What's shaking the future voters of Sean Gannon here? Future President of the United States of America. And again, beer review. We got the Goose Island Urban Wheat Ale. They're 312 right there for you. Now, let's go pour it out. We'll talk about what they got on their website. I believe Goose Island is now owned by InBev, which I guess people now loses credibility as a craft brew company. But again, that's what all these craft brewers are doing. Now, on their website, they say this style is an urban wheat ale. I don't know what makes it an urban wheat ale, but that's what it is. ABV is 4.2%, IBUs is 18. Color should be a hazy straw. Hops, Millennium, Cascade, and Halter Owl. Malts, two row, and wheat. Makes sense, being wheat beer. Flavor, crisp, fruity ale, smooth, and creamy. Little notes about it. Uh, bright, lemony, and a bit hazy. Inspired by the city of Chicago and densely populated, uh, densely populated with flavor, 312 spicy aroma of casket hops is followed by a crisp, fruity ale flavor delivered in a smooth, creamy body that's immensely refreshing. Let's see. All right, it does have a hazy color. A lot of sediment in here, but it could be. I've had this maybe. I don't know how long I had it, but it could be the wheat nature of it. Um, a lot of sediment in here. I don't think it's that old, to be honest, but... Mmm. I can smell the wheat. A little bit of hops in there. Mm. God bless you. My daughter sees it. Um, all right, let's go. Let's go. It's a hazy straw color. That is correct. Definitely tastes like a wheat beer. But not full on wheat beer. Some wheat beers have that really weedy flavor. Uh, so I would put this in a category of somebody who kind of likes wheat beers, but not like fully. This is probably the, this is the in between, I would say between a wheat beer and a regular ale. Hmm. I can see why they say it has a creamy body. I am getting that. It is. Slightly crisp, I would say it would be, should be more crisp. This really claim a crisp flavor. Now, can I get the fruity ale part? The fruity ale part. I don't really smell the fruitiness. I'm not really tasting the fruitiness. I'm getting more of that smooth and creamy uh, flavor in there. So the flavor, I would say, yeah, is more of that smooth and creamy. Um, light on the hops, uh, not so much weedy. Uh, yeah, it's like like a mix between a wheat and ale there, and I guess that's what it is, an urban wheat ale. Maybe, maybe that's the definition of that. Not sure. Anyway, it's actually not that bad of a beer. I normally don't like wheat beers, uh, so to put that in perspective here, it's not my cup of tea um, or my pint of beer, but this is not bad. Uh, I think it's a great relaxing beer, especially in the summertime, you know, we're kind of going into the fall now. But it's not bad beer. So if you want a lighter beer, but don't want to go with the other ones that InBev has, wink wink, uh, then this might be a good choice for you, because it's actually not too expensive. Um, that's one thing I do like about Goose Island uh, beers, that they've kind of cut the cost down there. They don't keep jacking up the price on them, so you generally can get them fairly cheap, comparative-wise. So, not a bad beer. I think it's a good bang for your buck. As far as taste goes, I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of five. Uh, I think that's pretty generous for a wheat beer there. So, 3.5 out of five for this 312 Urban Wheat Ale. And I will see you next time I have a pint or travel somewhere. So this is Sean Gannon here, signing off.